Welcome back to VegiePlot. Another glorious day here in Cornwall. I've got quite a few jobs I want to get done today. I want this bed here needs to be cleared out partially because I've got some plants which I'll show you, um, which I want to plant out, some climbing beans and some more perpetual spinach. Uh, I want to get some harvesting done of the courgettes which are up here. Uh, but I've also got lots and lots, as I think I said in an earlier video, of powdery mildew on the leaves. And I get it every year. It's not so much on these young plants, but more up here, you can see. So, I've bought myself some gear. So I've got myself a, a pressure sprayer off Amazon. Never had one of these and thought it might be quite useful. Uh, and this is Castile soap, which is a sort of an organic uh, vegan vegetarian type soap. Uh, this is potassium bicarbonate, um, sort of a food grade. And then the last thing I've got, which is over here in the sun trying to warm up, is some neem oil, which I've never used before either. I've seen lots of people use it, but apparently it needs to be warmed up in the sunshine to liquefy, so <laughs> I'm keeping it just out in the sun just to warm up a bit. So I'm going to do a mixture of that in the sprayer and then spray all the leaves and hopefully uh, see if we can get you know, get to grips with some of this uh, powdery mildew. And I shall obviously keep you updated, let you know if it works. I always find with runner beans, you've got to have a good old rummage to find what you like. See, I quite like them at this size, as I said before, not very big, but I have a feeling that I did spy a few earlier that <laughs> have sort of got away with themselves, got a bit too big for my liking. Oh, here's some nice ones. Yeah. Not too big. Oh, yeah, there we go. I saw that one earlier. Huge. And this one. I mean, they're not massive. It's definitely not longest run of bean competition winners, but they sort of get a bit big for me. I prefer them much smaller. Right, not a huge harvest, but uh, it's okay. Do good for tea for a couple of meals. So that's all good. Uh, one thing I know about run of beans is that if you want a good harvest, it's always a good idea to keep them well watered. They are quite a thirsty plant. So every time I'm coming up, I'm just giving them a good splash of water. This is one of the alfresco. Just about perfect, I'd say. I'll put that in the basket. And I think this is one of the gemmas. It's a beautiful, Beautiful yellow. This is the uh, last one I think was well, two here I could pick today. I'll just twist that one off. And I have this tiny one. They're really nice at this sort of size, sort of quite nutty and um, full of flavour and not many seeds, you know, their seeds are just tiny, so that's uh that's all of them. A lot of these are, are over now, so it's time to, to get them out while they're nice and sort of still reasonable uh, before they go to seed. So these lovely orangey golden ones that I've got here are called Boldor. They're an F1 variety, but the uh, when you cut them open, they're so sort of bright orange and they're really, really pretty. Tastes just like beetroot always, but yeah, if you haven't tried anything other than purple beetroot, it's well worth trying these. show you the basket as it stands. There we go. <laughs> Quite nice, isn't it? So we've got the red um, Boldor, um, no, sorry, golden Boldor beetroot here. Uh, and these are the Chioga, the ones that have a pink and uh, white banding inside. And then we've got the courgettes and the runner beans. So yeah, quite pleased with that so far. You see all the beautiful flowers here. I'm just amazed. Uh, the only thing is I wish I'd staked up the gladioli. Uh, but there you go. I should cut some of them, take home today. But all these Californian poppies and the Benariates is just looking wonderful. There's, uh, there's so much in the shade here that um, oh, ah, I'm going to move this bench over here. So, as I say, I haven't bought, uh, had one of these before. I've had one of those 
you know, just sort of simple little little sprayers, more for house plants really. Um, so I thought I'd invest in one of these. I can say I got it off Amazon, I think it was 12, 15 quid, something like that. Anyway, we'll unbox it. Well, I have already unboxed it, but I'm gonna unbox it just for you. <laughs> right, so we've got the spray arm with a little attachment here, screw thread thing, which I'll show you how that works in a minute. And then this is the container. Uh, the actual bottle now it has a tube attached to it if you can see this is about a meter just over a meter long i'd say and then you have a little handle arm on the end here with a spray lever which when you obviously press it the contents comes out of the arm and so you slide the arm into this little hole on the on on the end and then you screw this uh little or what you'd call it up anyway it acts as like a compression fitting and it tightens as, as you tighten it it squeezes and, and holds this firm so it doesn't come out uh, the container has sort of a pressure release valve and an arm here for doing the pumping i think it's a maximum according to the box of 25 pumps yeah 25 pumps maximum and then you can lock it off but yeah, so it unhooks, there are some little hooks on the top here and the actual handle then clicks under there to um, hold it in position so it doesn't go up. But you unclick it and then you can pump it. Put a bit of pressure in, lock it off. And then I think, well, it did work earlier, <laughs> I can press this little handle and you'll be able to hear it coming out. It's near the microphone, so hopefully you can hear that. Okay, so that's kind of basically how it works. Now, as I say, I haven't used any of these ingredients before. Uh, neem oil is obviously an oil. It's from a tree, a bit like a mahogany, I think, from what I was reading online. I can't remember all the details. I'll, again, I got this off Amazon, just a small container. And it obviously doesn't mix with water, oil and water separate. So that's why I've got a bit of soap to sort of break it down and hold it um, so it doesn't clog everything up and just float to the top of the water. And then this potassium bicarbonate also acts as something which will um, combat the powdery mildew. Um, right, they don't put much of these according to the ingredients I've, uh, recipes I've seen. I think it's like a tablespoon of soap, tablespoon of neem oil, and half a tablespoon of this bi um, potassium bicarbonate. Um, I shall check that uh, and I'll put the ingredients on the screen now. It's all very scientific around here, you know, <laughs> and precise. Right, so I'm just gonna undo the top of this. It's all very rigid plastic. It's got measurements on the side, liters and gallons. I'm gonna use the gallon measurement because that's what all the uh, recipes online seem to say. So, Although we deal in litres over here in the UK, I'm going to go with gallons. I've got some water in here, so I'm just going to pour into here. Right, that's a gallon. Okay. I think once this is opened, obviously you've got to keep this really dry, this stuff. So it'll probably just cake up, but... Oh. I think that's a tablespoon. Time I level it off in the spoon, you can't see all of it, but put that in there. Okay, tablespoon of Castile soap. Right, pour that in. And then finally, there's neem oil, which is all liquefied now, which is great. No special lid on this. I'm going to do the same for this. Okay, right. Tablespoon of that. Okay. Now, where's the lid? Right. Make sure the top's all clean. Tighten that up. What I should do is lock that off. I'm not going to pump it up now. Um, I'll give it a good shake. 
Right, I think that's mixed it up good and proper. So what I'm going to do now is put this in the shed and come back this evening. So as I say, just uh, hang with us and we'll go and spray this evening and I'll add it to the end of the video. Yeah. Come with me, let's have a look at the kale because it's looking really good at the moment. Yeah, look at this, this netting's holding up well. What should we have? Should we have some off that plant there? That's looking pretty healthy. Right, let's just uh, lift this up a little. Right. right, I'm just going to take leaves from around the base of the plant. Here, yeah. a couple of uh, ones that were really close to the ground aren't so good. So these will go in the compost again, a bit yellow. Uh, but the rest look really nice and uh, yeah, we should put these on the heart in the harvest basket and I'll take these home. Um, what I do is when I get home is I chop the ends off and put them into a glass of water uh, and they will stay fresh like that for quite a few days indoors just and then we just use them up over a few days. Yeah, really doing well this, keeping all the pigeons out. But apart from that, yeah, performing really well at the moment. Right, I've just grabbed these plants and take them down and put them under this netting. Raise that and hopefully I can just slide this in. Yeah, just like that. Great. I think they'll be fine in there. These gladioli, they look absolutely beautiful, don't they? These white ones especially, they've got a very pale pink tinge on the older um, flowers at the bottom here. But before they go over, I want to take some home uh, so we can enjoy them at home. See them? Look at them, absolutely beautiful. So, yeah, really pleased with them. And I put them in a vase at home and they shall continue opening up at the top here. Great, right, let's put these in the basket. So um, what I shall do now is quickly intercept me filming the uh, watering, not watering, spraying all the courgettes and squash leaves uh, this evening. Right, it's the evening now, but um, I've left the microphone for the camera at home, so this might sound a bit odd. Uh, luckily there's no wind, so you shouldn't get any hiss, but um, yeah, if it sounds odd, apologies for that. It's a really beautiful evening. It's been lovely here all day. So I've got the spray up. I've given it a good shake and a pump, so I should get on now and spray all these courgettes and the squash. I think the main thing is you've got to spray the top and the bottom, so I shall do the top first and then the bottom afterwards. Well, that's done. All the leaves, top and bottom, of all the courgettes, all the squash over there, and these uh, squash and pumpkins up here. So that feels really good. Okay, right, back to the other bit of the video. Okay, hopefully that was interesting. So here we are, uh, another harvest basket. Uh, thick and fast at the moment, aren't they? And uh, I haven't had kale for a while, uh, but I think it's going to be on the menu a lot more now because those plants are doing really, really well. Uh, one's curly and one's sort of flat. They're more or less exactly the same, to be honest, but I think one's bred to be um, better in the UK climate. Not sure, I'll put it on the screen if I know. And then, yeah, we have this lot, these lovely beetroot. So we've got the Baldor. Sorry, this is the Baldor. These are the golden orange ones. These are the Baldor. Uh, and I shall try and do a, show you what the insides are like. Beautiful, beautiful colour, these. Uh, and these are the Chioga, Chogia. Uh, basically, if you cut these in half, uh, I'll show you now. They have lovely um, pink and white uh, rings, sort of. I'm sure I've covered that before previously but yeah that's quite a nice one a lot of these are quite small but what I shall do is um, maybe steam them or roast them I'm not sure but then um, pickle some of them and so on so yeah got quite a lot of them there 
And then we've got some lovely runner beans at the top here. Gorgeous runner beans, which I don't like too big, as I said. And then some courgette, which are a mixture of uh, al fresco, gemma, and soleil. I think that's the other one I was trying to remember earlier. So yeah, there we are. That's today's harvest. Hmm. Pleased with them. And finally, last but not least, the showstoppers of today. <laughs> Uh, not vegetables or fruit, but gladioli. <laughs> gladioli. Absolutely stunning. Wonderful colours, aren't they? Gorgeous. I particularly like the white ones. I don't know where they came from, actually, because I dug these up from home and I don't remember having any white ones. So there you go. Anyway, really pleased with them. So there's a cheesy picture for you. <laughs> right. OK, as always, Thank you very much for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed that, this video. If you got something from it, please do like, subscribe and hit the bell button for notifications. It'd be great to have you join in and please do leave comments below if you've got any or you've got any suggestions or ideas and things. And uh, I look forward to updating you, letting you know how the powdery mildew uh, spray works. Okay, that's it for now. See you soon. Bye for now.